at a special time. Clint Eastwood, Pale Rider. Followed by Eyewitness News after the movie. This is Eyewitness News with John Drury and Diane Burns, Steve Deschler with Weather, Jim Rose on Sports, and the Eyewitness News team. John Drury is a toy train collector. He also is news anchor for ABC in Chicago. It's believed. Tom McComas called and asked me if I'd narrate a piece for Toy Train Review. I've been a toy train buff since I was a little kid, and Tom is doing such a great job with Toy Train Review that I'm happy to help out. My parents gave me my first train when I was eight years old. It was an inexpensive, sheet metal, American Flyer Zephyr. It sold for $5. It was during the Depression, and $5 in those days was a lot of money. But my parents got it for me for Christmas, and I was thrilled. Since then, I've bought lots of trains, but I've never been able to find that sheet metal zephyr, and I'm still looking. It's a coincidence that Tom asked me to narrate a story about Weaver models because I just purchased a Weaver. It's gorgeous. So I'm as eager as you are to find out about the history of Weaver models. Let's get started. Weaver models is another new name which popped up on the toy train horizon in the mid-80s. A division of quality craft products, Weaver models experience rapid growth during those boom times. Bob Weaver owns and operates quality craft. Bob received a set of Lionel trains before his first birthday and has been playing with trains, either model or toy, ever since. He currently operates a scale, O-gauge, 34 by 60 foot layout in the basement of his Northumberland, Pennsylvania home. Weaver started making H.O. Woodcar kits under the Quality Craft name in 1965. In 1980, he made his first O-gauge car, a scale two-bay coal car. He asked his friend Hal Karstens, publisher of Railroad Model Craftsman, what he should call his new line of scale cars. He said, why don't you use your own? It's just a good name. So Weaver was born. Weaver brought out his first engine in 1986. It was a two-rail O-gauge scale RS3. So now we have our first engines born, and this is a smashing success. This is uh, unbelievable. In the late 80s, the surge in the toy train market was fueled by a huge increase in the number of operators, guys who wanted to build layouts and run trains, and the trend in layouts was towards realism. A market for high rail scale locomotives was created. In 1986, Weaver decided to enter that market. He tried unsuccessfully to modify his scale RS3 so it would negotiate the sharp 15-inch radius curves frequently used in high rail. The narrow body would not permit the can motor adequate movement. Weaver's second locomotive, an Alco FA2, introduced in 1990, was able to handle the short radius curves. Now our FAs run on the 15-inch radius track. You've got a wider body, you've got more room inside for the tower to move and get all the the turning motion that you need to, to get around the tighter radius curves. Weaver entered into an agreement with Sam Honksa Trains Limited to produce model trains under the Weaver model's name. A Korean company, Sam Honksa, has a reputation for manufacturing high quality scale and high rail model trains. The first model Sam Honksa produced for Weaver was a fine model of the Pennsylvania Railroad's Mountain M1A locomotive. It was introduced in the fall of 1990. Other brass models quickly followed. They included the UPFEF3, the Nickel Plate Roads Berkshire, Pensy's T1 Duplex, and the legendary GG1. Sam Honksa also made a handsome model of General Motors E8 diesel in plastic. Short run stamping dies made of brass made it possible for companies like Weaver, Right of Way, K Line, and Williams to make highly detailed engines in low quantities sometimes as few as 500. The cost of these short-run stamping dies is about one-tenth the cost of a die used to make die-cast engines. They've got lots of ideas. They've been in business a long time. They've, been a, they've made a lot of HO engines. So if they come up with something they think might sell to really, you know, would be good in their gauge, we talk back and forth. After we decide on an engine, they have the plans over there for every engine ever made in the United States. 
So they, they send us the plans, we okay, we circle certain things we want, certain things we can live without. The two things. In other words, is there enough detail on the engine uh, to warrant the price? Weaver credits his straightforward approach in dealing for his successful business relationship with Sam Honksa. Well, I don't argue with him. Uh, you give me, I ask you, or I give you an engine that I might want to do. You quote me a price. If I can live with the price, I won't haggle whatsoever, but I want a quality product when I get it. And I want the detail that belongs on it. We commit to Sam Hunk to X number of pieces. Now we're guessing at that. So you get a you get your color catalog made up then and put your now we're our color catalog with the G5 and what's coming in ninety two, right? Is gonna be in the color catalog. Then we mail those out to everybody by the thousands. Now it's up to us to sell these things. Right? That we we've already put down payments on all these. So far, sales have soared. So enormous amount of engines, I'll phrase it that way. <laughs> Our business has quadrupled in the last three years. Weaver trains are sold through 15 distributors, and there are no plans to add on any more. So I bring on five or ten more, right? That's going to delete some of their sales. Because there's only so many people out there going to buy engines. I'd much rather bring in 500 engines to sell them then bring in 700 engines and have 300 of them left. Weaver has big plans for the future. Well, we've got a GP38-2 started, which is going to be a brand new engine in about a year. I've got cars that I want to make. I've got buildings I want to make. Uh, I'm not going to live long enough to do all this. That's why I say I've got my grandson. My, my son-in-law is my right arm now. But my grandson is there. I mean, he's my, <laughs> I've got him brainwashed. And he's going to be a die maker. He's going to learn to make his own dies. And... What about the recession? It's, 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 it's affected us some. But the thing, that, the thing that, I'm, that scares me, if the economy picks up, right, I'm out of business because I can't keep up to it now. 